good to see you and good to see there are still those that are coming in. Uh, whether you are in person or whether you are joining us online, we are so glad that you call this church your home and are joining us for worship. Even if you, <coughs> excuse me, even if you don't yet call this your home, maybe you're visiting for the first time, I want you to know you are welcome here. My name is Heather Foley. I truly am honored to be one of the Methodist pastors here in Chesterton, and I welcome you to our time of worship. I want us to turn our focus immediately on to God. I love how Psalm 18 opens. It says, I love you, Lord, my strength. I wonder if we could just say that together. I love you, Lord, my strength. The psalmist goes on to say, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Oh, that's powerful. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. You, O oh God, make your saving help my shield. Your right hand sustains me. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted is God our Savior. With our eyes firmly fixed on him, let's stand and join together in worship. Yeah. 
Amen. Please take a seat. Hear these words from Luke chapter 11, verses 14 and 15, and then 17 through 26. One day, Jesus cast out a demon from a man who couldn't speak. And when the demon was gone, the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed, but some of them said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. He knew their thoughts, so he said, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A family splintered by feuding will fall apart. You say I am empowered by Satan, but if Satan is divided and fighting against himself, how can his kingdom survive? And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cast out demons too, so they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I'm, I am casting out demons by the power of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For when a strong man is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert searching for rest. But when it finds none, it says, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds that its former home is all swept and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. Amen. Amen. All right, my young friends, come on up. Good morning. Good morning, Millie. Hello, Annabelle. Oh, good to see all of you. Fantastic. All right, so I know that lots of you started school this week, right? How many went to school this week? Lots of you, right? And so I'm going to guess, I, I remember, I was your age one time, and I remember that sometimes the start of school had all, I, there were all kinds of feelings that I had about that. That I might feel really happy to see some of my friends again. But I could be a little scared because I rode a school bus a long ways to school and there were always new kids on the bus that I didn't know and I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. I could sometimes get mad because my little sister would hide my books. I, you know, so lots of feelings going on. I wonder, did you, what kind of feelings did you have this week about school? Anybody happy at school? William, you were happy? Awesome. Millie, you were happy? What made you happy at school this week? I did it a new school. That you got to see lots of people at school. Awesome. Anybody, anybody scared? Anybody want to confess that you were a little scared this week? New school. New school, Alice. I get that. Oh, I totally get that. Anybody get angry this week? You want to confess you were a little angry? Annabelle? I, I get it. See, you're not alone, honestly. Disappointed. Oh, that's a different kind of feeling. Absolutely. Well, you know, here's what I want you to know. First of all, I want you to know that I've felt the things that you felt, and, and these grown-ups too, they may not raise their hand and be brave like you, but trust me, they've, they've all felt at, sad and mad and happy and scared too. And I want you to know that Jesus has felt those things too. Jesus felt happy. In fact, there was a time, he tells a story, that he sent off his disciples to go out and, and preach and to heal and do all kinds of things. He sent them off in pairs, two by twos, because we should always go with a buddy. And when they came back and told all these stories about great things that God's power had done, Jesus laughed. He was so happy for them and for the kingdom. Well, Jesus 
he, he knew, he felt scared sometimes too. That's kind of hard to believe, right? But on that day before he went to the cross, when he was in the garden praying to God, he, he was kind of scared because he says, God, don't make me do this. But yet, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. That's, that's a, little bit of, a little bit of fear. Jesus got mad once. Well, more than once, actually. But one time that I can think of, the disciples, all the crowds around Jesus, they didn't want any of the kids to come up and be with Jesus. They were trying to keep all the kids away from Jesus. And Jesus got angry. He wanted to be with the children. All right, which emotion have I left out? Oh, sad. Did you know that there's a time in the Bible that said Jesus cried? When his good friend Lazarus died. Jesus was sad, just like his sisters and his friends and everybody else. So Jesus knows how you feel. He sees you. He knows how you feel and he understands. And I want you to know that, first of all, Jesus is good. He's never bad or evil. Jesus is good. So when hard things happen to you, Jesus is there. He's not causing those hard things to happen, but he is with you always. He has promised us that. Jesus will be our friend, always our friend. And the Holy Spirit is a gift from Jesus. The Holy Spirit lives in us and helps us when we're feeling happy or mad or sad or scared or disappointed or anything else. It's the Holy Spirit that comes and is our helper. Now, Jesus, he didn't let his feelings cause him to disobey God. He always did what God wanted him to do. Just a minute, William. And even when Jesus was feeling those feelings, he didn't hurt any other people. Sometimes that can happen to us too, right? All right, William, what did you want to say? Uh, I hear God. Do you hear God talking to you? That's wonderful. What a gift that is. Oh, fantastic. We can all talk back to him, right? That's what we call prayer. Yeah. It's us talking to God. Like you just talk? Yeah, and, and I hear him talk back to me. That's wonderful. What a very good gift. So we can know that God is with all of us. When we can hear his voice and when we can't. No matter what we're feeling, God is with us. He's promised us that, and he'll be true and faithful to us. So I want us to pray together, and so I'm going to say something, and then I want you to repeat it if, if you're willing, okay? There'll be short sentences. You don't have to memorize anything, all right? So let's pray together, and maybe the grown-ups will come along with us and pray. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I know you love me. Jesus, I know you're here with me. Jesus, I know you will help me. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. All right, my friends, you can use that prayer anytime you want to talk to God when you don't have the words. All right, we have, oh my goodness, a whole crowd in the back of the room ready to go upstairs with you all. So why don't you head back there and uh, see what kind of fun awaits. Fantastic. So for my older friends who are staying in the room, even though you may want to go up with the kids, because there's probably snacks up there, I'm just guessing, snacks and who knows what. Uh, for my older friends who are in the room and those of you joining us online, uh, we are in the midst of answering some of the faith questions that you submitted to me. Uh, I had asked you all what kind of things you were thinking about, wondering about, worrying about, and uh, you sent them in. And so um, we've been talking about that. Last Sunday, we talked about creation and the Bible and um, science. 
And to sum it all up, what I said to you was that if you're Christian, you must believe that God is the creator. But we Christians differ beyond that that we have different understandings of creation. Um, and even in all those different understandings, we can still be faithful Christian Methodists. The question for today is what is spiritual warfare? What is spiritual warfare? Once again, I'm just gonna tell you, this is one huge question with so many different aspects. Um, and it's quite possible that I'm gonna say something that will offend you, or maybe you'll be offended because I didn't say something that you think is important. Um, I, I'm just gonna apologize up front, remind you that I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, and we're, we're gonna go on. I do have some hopes for today as well as all of uh, these Sundays that we're considering these faith questions. Um, you know, I really just want us to, to really think about what it is that we believe and, and why. I know that's happened for me in preparing. I hope it happens for you in the hearing. Um, what do we believe and why is that? Um, I want everybody to know that you have a place in this church and in the Christian faith, even with your doubts and your wonderings and your questions, uh, you, there's a place for you. I want you to know and remember we, uh, that our faith has a, a, a big component of holy mystery. We talk about that when we gather at the communion table, um, but that's true in other ways of our faith as well. There's, there's holy mystery for us. And also my hope is that there will be something today that you will find that gives you reason to praise God and that gives you reason to commit or recommit your whole heart and your life to our God. So with all of these questions, I want you to remember that I start with scripture. That's the place that I think is most important. That's what our Wesleyan faith tells us is most important. Start with scripture, it always comes first. But to that, as a good Methodist, I apply human reasoning. I apply uh, the tradition of the Christian church, the whole tradition, as well as my personal experience of the Holy Spirit. Those three things build up under the scripture and lead me in a direction. Uh, it's the method that we Wesleyans call the Wesleyan quadrilateral. Um, and so that's my approach. So what is spiritual warfare? Jesus and the Bible and church tradition are very clear that there is a spiritual realm. And my personal experience says that also there is a spiritual realm. The Holy Spirit and Satan are real. So I, with that experience and teaching behind me, I found it interesting to discover in my preparation that the Barna Group did a study back in 2009 of Christians, and they asked them about the Holy Spirit, and they asked them about Satan, and what they found was that the majority of Christians don't think that either are real. They said that 35% said that they were believing or somewhat believing that Satan was real. But almost 60% said no. And on the flip side then, uh, they, they found that about 35% of Christians somewhat believed or somewhat believed that the Holy Spirit was real. But again, 60% said no. Well, in the scriptures, from creation onward, there is plenty of talk about the battles between good and evil. And in all four gospel accounts that tell us about Jesus' time here on earth in those three years of ministry, there is plenty of information about Jesus' encounters with Satan and his warnings and his teachings to his people, that would be us, about Satan and evil. Remember, Jesus met with Satan. He encountered Satan in the wilderness and was tempted by him. Jesus said that he saw Satan fall from heaven. Jesus told several parables or stories about the dangers 
of the devil. The, he said that the devil plucks up the seeds of faith that are sown in some people. He told another parable about wheat and weeds, saying that the weeds were the people of the devil and they should be left to grow until the harvest time of judgment. Jesus warned that people who neglect the hungry and the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned, they're all going to the eternal fire along with Satan and Satan's angels. At one point, Jesus called Judas the devil, and then later he said to Peter, get away from me, Satan. And of course, we just heard in the reading that Bill read for us from Luke 11, that Jesus himself was accused of being Satan, of using the power of Satan to do his work. Friends, Christianity invites us into the spiritual realm. Christianity invites us into the spiritual realm and it asks us to believe because Jesus believed. Now, in several ways, I have seen that often people can fall into to do different camps, um, either tend to blame the devil for too much suffering and misbehavior, or can dismiss the influence of Satan too much. We, we can blame, fall into the trap of blaming the devil for too much. Uh, Eve tried that in the Garden of Eden. God came and asked her, uh, have you eaten the fruit of the tree that I commanded you not to? And she said, oh, the serpent made me do it. Well, that didn't work with God then. Uh, he, that excuse was not accepted. God knew what had happened. He had seen and he, he, there was a consequence to that choice. Uh, the devil will come and tempt us, uh, but we're still accountable for our actions. We're given free choice. We're still accountable. And that's part of the basis for the prayer that Jesus gave us, right? He gave us the Lord's Prayer, which here in this worship service we say once a month, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. The power of God is always on our side when we call upon it. So we can, we can tend to give too much credit to, to evil, but also we can fall on the other side, as Barna's survey showed, and dismiss the evil and the work of the devil. And, and maybe you would say to me, I'm just guessing, but maybe you would say to me, okay, I can't believe that there's this guy in red tights and a cape with, with horns. That, that's just, you're going too far. Well, I want you to know that images of, the, of Satan have varied across the ages. Um, the Bible itself does not paint a clear picture for us of what Satan would look like. Um, in Genesis, he's a serpent. In Revelation, a beast. And everything in between, that image that maybe you think of from a Halloween costume or uh, some comic book or advertisement or something of the horned guy in the red tights, that is really a much more modern representation. Um, other modern representations, like, I don't know, I hear that there's this show that was on Netflix called Lucifer. It was a Marvel comic before that. Showed a guy in a business suit. You know, so it can, uh, Satan can be depicted in all kinds of things that shouldn't detract us from believing that there's a real force that is working against us. We have faith in God who is unseen. So can't we also believe in the existence of the devil who is unseen? In our faith, we acknowledge this in our baptism. At our baptism, before we receive the water of forgiveness, the water of belonging, the water of new life, the water of community, we, we answer some questions in front of our whole church. The pastor asks, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. 
I have yet to meet someone who says I don't. Maybe they lie to me. I hope not. We ask, do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And again, those coming to accept the grace and the love of Jesus say, I do. Now, Jesus told us in that Luke scripture that we heard that we can't just simply leave our hearts cleansed. Right? We come, we come to the waters of baptism and we get our hearts cleansed. We start again. But if we leave ourselves empty, the evil will just return and return stronger than ever. But God is on our side and his grace his free gift of grace is always offered to us, always available to us. And so we must allow ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit, which is also a work of baptism. We must allow our hearts and our minds and our lives to be filled with God's love and power. I want us to hear what Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keeping, keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whatever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Can you imagine Paul bound in a prison Declaring to people that there is a way to resist and fight against evil. <laughs> Suzanne Nicholson, in her commentary on the letter to Ephesians, points out that Paul bookends the whole letter with God's power. He starts in the beginning with chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, saying, I pray that the eyes of your heart will have enough light to see the overwhelming greatness of God's power that's working among us believers. This power is conferred by the energy of God's powerful strength. And then Paul concludes in chapter 6, verse 10, which we just heard with, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. See, it's the mighty power of God that raised Jesus from the dead that is also available to you and me. The same power that raised Christ out of the grave, resurrected him and ascended him into heaven is the same power that is available to you and I when we face temptation, when we face evil, when we face suffering, when we're in need of healing of the body, mind, and spirit. What Christ did on the cross in his death and resurrection declared victory over Satan. There will eventually come a day when the war will be over. 
But there are still battles that rage now in our lives. And the weapon that we have, the defense that we have, that sure defense is God and God's power. Now, did you notice that God's weapons for the battle are not violent ones? His weapons call for integrity of character and for strength of faith. God tells us to strap on truth, to be people of honesty and authenticity. God tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness, to live our lives in a holy and good and loving manner, to let that be part of our DNA. He says, take on the gospel of peace, a peace that can provide a foundation for our lifelong journey. No matter if we're walking in a valley, if we're walking up a mountain, if we're getting sidetracked off the right road, the gospel of peace can be our pathway. It says, take on the shield of faith. Believe in God's faithfulness. Believe in God's promises. And with your belief, you will extinguish every flaming arrow of the opposition. Put on the helmet of salvation. By claiming God's offers of forgiving and transformational love, we have protection from na- in the now and in the yet to come. Stand firm on the word of God. That word of God that the Holy Spirit living in us makes living and active That same word of God that Jesus used as his weapon against the devil in the desert when he was being tempted, take on the word of God. Know it, remember it, use it, repeat it. Paul says Satan can't possibly, can't possibly defeat what is so powerfully representative of God. What comes to us so powerfully through God's strength and his grace and his goodness. Now I'll tell you, from my perspective, not every physical, mental, and emotional malady is caused by evil. There are some things that come upon human beings that require counseling and psychiatrists, and medications, and surgeries. But at no time is God absent. God is always present in those struggles as well as the struggles of the spiritual realm. God is always present, and there are so many things that can be healed only with prayer and God's power. I'll give you just a couple of personal experiences. I, I have three friends that I can th- quickly think of, three pastor friends who have shared stories with me about their participation in exorcisms. It's not something we talk about a lot, but it does happen even in Methodist places. And I will tell you that personally twice now in two different churches, I have been called by parishioners sometimes late at night because they detect an evil presence in their home and they're distraught. Pastor, can you come over? And so I come and we begin to walk the home, walk through every room, praying and proclaiming the word of God. We declare that Jesus is victorious. We call on God's faith and God's power. We read the word. We lean in to the peace of Christ, the victory of Christ. We call upon the sustaining of the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you, I I have no proof of what was there 
But I will tell you that the parishioners felt peace. They didn't call me to come back or ever complain again that they were disturbed in their spirit in their home. I truly believe Christianity calls us into the spiritual realm. And from my reading of Luke 11, Jesus didn't give us an option out. He didn't give us a choice to be neutral or unsure. He said, whoever isn't with me is automatically against me. So I close with a reminder from Psalm 18 that we started our worship with. God's power is always with us. The Lord is our rock, our fortress, our deliverer, our shield, the horn of our salvation and our stronghold. He rescues us from our powerful enemy even when the enemy is too strong for us. The Lord lives, praise be to the rock, exalted is our God, the Savior. Amen. Let's pray together. 
God, you are all seeing, all knowing, all strength. None of us is beyond your sight. You see us, even though we may not be able to see you. None of us is lost to you, for you are the shepherd that comes looking for the one. And so, Lord, may we in this time of worship and prayer, may we feel you near us. May we feel your embrace. May you clear our minds of the clutter. Keep us fixed upon your truth, your salvation, your promises. May we be able to cling in faith to our salvation and that victory that is to come. Lord, we lift up the many among us and those, um, our Christian brothers and sisters in the world who are battling against evil today. Lord, may you infuse your strength to each one. For none of us can do this life on our own. Not and do it well, not and do it um, with the hope that is yet to come. We need you, O oh Lord. And so may you show your power to those who seek you. May you break down the walls in our relationships. May you destroy the barriers of our minds that keep us from embracing you and living a holy life. May you infuse us with your grace that changes lives and changes the world. Lord, several prayer requests have come to us from our congregation, and we lift those up as one body united in Christ today. First, we praise you for the successful head reconstruction surgery that Roman, our little five-year-old friend, endured. We praise you and ask for recovery for him. We lift up to you Joyce Pergel, who's home recovering. We name before you Dwayne, Melissa, Anthony, Amanda, and the families of Scott and Tracy, who are mourning their deaths. Jesus, we know that you experienced all the emotions that we feel, the joy of new beginnings and surprises, the anger at injustice, the sadness of grief, the fear of the unknown. So Jesus, meet us in our feelings, meet those we have named before you in their situations. Reveal your power and your glory and offer the comfort and peace that only you can provide. In the name of Jesus and the hope of Jesus, we pray together. Amen. I remind you that if you have a prayer request to share with the church, we have a large group of people that are connected to our prayer emails. Um, so as soon as we receive one of those requests from you, we get it out to them. If you've asked to be have that made public, and I know that we have faithful people. I'm looking at a few of them in the room at the moment who are very... Uh, rigorous about lifting up those prayers and interceding for you. When Paul wrote his letter, by the way, to the Ephesians and told them to stand firm in the Lord, he said, brethren, meaning all y'all. He wasn't talking to one, he was talking to the many. Let us stand firm together in prayer and in living as disciples. 
Also on our website, oh, I didn't, didn't tell you, but I tell you every week, you can connect with us in the church office if you haven't figured it out by now, through email, through voicemail, or you can go online to chestertonumc.org um, and connect with us on the Contact Us page. There's a place for prayer requests. Also a place for you to subscribe to our weekly Friday e-news, which is our primary means of communicating with you about all kinds of things related to church and living as a disciple and celebrating the goodness that is around us. Sometimes we forget that God's working good still in the midst of all the bad news, but he is, and we celebrate that as often as we can. So if you're not a subscriber, I hope that you will go onto the website and click on that. A couple of things that I want to lift up to you. Uh, one was in the E! News and one wasn't. So this coming Saturday is a special event being held at Lake w Lakeville United Methodist Church in Lakeville, Indiana. Um, our North District of United Methodists are getting together. Our district superintendent, uh, as she was visiting all 111 churches last year, she heard over and over and over and over again that we wanted to be together, that we were tired of being separated because of COVID or any other reason, and we wanted to be together. And so she formed a group that has planned this wonderful celebration for this coming Saturday. And there's going to be um, music. Three or four different bands have agreed to come and, and play Christian and, and other music. Uh, there are going to be speakers that are there. Uh, there's food trucks because there wouldn't be a Methodist event if we didn't have food. And so there'll be food trucks. You can buy from them or come and bring your own picnic if you want. Uh, there'll be a tent for some shade. You can uh, bring your blankets or your lawn chairs and sit under the tent. Uh, there For youth, there is a youth tent with all kinds of yard games. And for the kids, there's going to be a bounce house and face painting and a balloon artist and uh, crafts. It'd be like a mega VBS, I think. Um, so lots of things going on for the whole family. And I'll be going. Um, I'm leaving here at, let me check my time, 9 o'clock, because there is that whole time change nonsense. Um, and so um, it's Lakeville, if you don't know, it's at the intersection of Indiana 4 and US 31. It's just south of South Bend, about an hour from here. If you want to carpool with me, I will take the church van. Roy, I'm going to need some training, but I'll take the church van. And uh, we can all go together and uh, just have some great fun and enjoy being together and stronger together. It, it, we are stronger than we can be apart. And certainly we know that when two or three are gathered, Jesus is in our midst. So if you have nothing else scheduled on Saturday and want to have some fun, uh, let me know and we can carpool or you can drive your own self and find your way there. Um, could be a good time. Also, there'll be a prayer booth. I'm just looking at my notes. And they're going to take up a collection for Basher Children's Home um, in Goshen, which does some amazing work with um, troubled kids and foster kids all across Indiana. Um, second announcement, I just want to tell you thank you so much for participating in our Christmas in July survey uh, while I was gone on vacation. The results are in our Christmas Eve times. If you want to mark your calendar, will be 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock. 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, both services will be in the sanctuary. There'll be far more details about that as we get closer to Christmas. Let's not make it go too fast. It's still August, and I'd like to enjoy that. Um, but we've got it booked on the calendar, so just know. As we continue in our worship together, uh, we come to a time where we are able to give back to God a portion of the financial blessings that he's given to us. Everything comes from God. We talked about that last week when we talked about creation. It still remains true. God has given us so much, not just the air that we breathe, but all the things that we eat and the homes that we live in. He's made all that possible, and it's our privilege, our honor to return to him a portion of that through our gifts, tithes, and offerings that the work of his kingdom would continue for someone else. Someone told you about Jesus and you and I need to tell somebody else. 
that they too would know the power and the strength of God. So if you've brought your gift here into the church today, um, as always, you are welcome to put that in the offering box that's over next to the welcome table at any time. You also can mail those in or you can go online and there's a, a way to give an electronic gift, however it is you choose to do that. May you do it with gratitude, with joy, with faith. Let's pray over those offerings that will be given this week. Oh, Jesus, you are Lord, you are head of our church, and we ask you to receive what we offer as members of your body. As we serve you with our hands and our feet and with our finances, may you coordinate our efforts so that nothing that should be done is left undone and that all your purposes are accomplished to the glory of your name. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Bow before our Lord. I stand before you, Holy Lord. I stand. we started our worship saying, Lord, I love you. I want you all to know that the Lord says back to you, I love you, my precious and honored children. Go in his grace and his strength and his power to live your holy week. Amen. Amen. I'm